Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. Nike has entered the blockchain space. Now, what I'm going to tell you today is very eye-opening. Even if you have been involved in cryptocurrency for a few years, what you'll, what you'll hear today, it might be something you never really knew about, or maybe you just weren't paying attention. So let's start back in April 25th, 2019. Nike, they filed a trademark application in the U.S. for the term Crypto Kicks. So at the time, we didn't know too much about it. Josh Gerben, a trademark attorney in the U.S. who analyzed the file, filing on Twitter said, this appears to be a filing for a brand of a cryptocurrency. This is trademark speak for this is a cryptocurrency called CryptoKicks. So again, we didn't know much about it at the time. Fast forward to today, December 10th, Nike got that patent. So Nike patents a system for tokenizing shoes on Ethereum's blockchain. So footwear giant Nike patented in shoes that are tokenized as a non-fungible token on the Ethereum blockchain. You might ask, what's a non-fungible token? A non-fungible token is a token that is unique and it cannot be copied. We'll use, for, on the opposite end to understand this, let's talk about something that is fungible. Most digital assets, especially prior to the invention of Bitcoin and blockchain, were fungible. They, they can be copied, they can be replaced for one another. They're not unique. You could take a file, you could copy it. They're the same thing. Also, we can use money. Dollar bills are fungible. One dollar equals one dollar. They're not unique. They're, they have the same identity, they have the same value. So here with a non-fungible token, that token is unique. It cannot be copied. So why is this important? when it comes to Nike and blockchain, offering a non-fungible token. So the token would be unlocked with the purchase of a corresponding physical shoe by linking a 10-digit shoe identification code with the owner identification code. The system apparently aims to provide a way to ensure the authenticity of the goods. So to restate that, when Nike is issues a shoe, they'll attach to it a non-fungible token, so a token that cannot be copied. And when someone buys the shoe, they can verify that the shoe is legitimate product, that it's not fake. And not only that, after it can be resold on the market. And many times people are out there buying Nikes, Jordans, and paying expensive prices for shoes, which are not always real. So with this new system, people will be able to verify that the product is legitimate. So I hope, I hope you understand that first part. This is kind of like a supply chain. Um, you know, there's another project called VeChain that is working in supply chain. It's pretty much the idea of verifying products that they are legitimate, where they're from, how they were made. So you can track it with one of these non-fungible tokens. So that is very interesting. But now what we're gonna talk about is the eye-opening part I mentioned earlier in the video. So we're going to read this quote from this webpage from Cointelegraph. It mentions using the digital asset, so that would be the Nike non-fungible token, the buyer is enabled to securely trade or sell the tangible pair of shoes. So this we know. We know they can take a physical shoe, they can sell it, it can be verified. Now here is the eye-opening part. Not only that, they can trade or sell the digital shoe, store the digital shoe in a cryptocurrency wallet or other digital blockchain locker intermingle or breed the digital shoe with another digital shoe to create shoe offspring. So not only is someone going to have a physical shoe when they buy a Nike, a Nike shoe that's using this non-fungible token, they'll also have access to a digital shoe on the blockchain. And again, these are digital shoes that are unique. They cannot be copied. So you people are going to even have the ability to sell a digital shoe. They'll even be able to take two digital shoes and intermingle them, breed a new digital shoe. And this is crazy, right? Who would pay for a digital product? That's, that's, that sounds so stupid. Well, if you are over, let's say 21, you, you won't understand this concept. I mean, I'm, I'm over 21, and it took, me a, it, it took me quite some time to really understand this, but anyone under 21, I'm just using that you know, rough age range, they'll understand this. We're living in a world now where people are paying for digital goods. So these are digital goods that are actually rare or unique. They cannot be copied. Remember, they're non-fungible tokens. And it's already happened. 
many of you heard of CryptoKitties. We're just going to quickly review. So CryptoKitties was a application built on top of Ethereum. What it was, it's, it's such a simple idea. It was digital cats on a blockchain. You can, you can customize them, you can add colors, but the cool thing about it was no one can copy your CryptoKitty. They're non-fungible, they are unique, therefore they are rare. And it got to such a crazy point that someone paid $170,000 for the most expensive crypto kitty ever. And I know what you're thinking, that is crazy. Well, maybe it is crazy, but whether you think it's crazy, whether I think it's crazy, this is just how it is now. This is where the world is moving to. And we're seeing this the most in video games. If you're a fan of video games, then maybe you have heard of the value of non-fungible tokens. Over here I have an article from Medium that talks about the value of NFTs or non-fungible tokens to video games. So they are entirely unique and there's no way to copy or steal them, giving them a higher value than other kinds of virtual assets. And if you are into rare objects, you know that what makes it rare is that just no one else can get it. It, it can be a rare piece of art, it could be a rare picture, it could be a rare book, a rare baseball card, it, it could be the most random thing. But as long as it's rare and we know that no one else can have it, this is what gives it value. And then also in the video game industry, we're, we're seeing a big move to non-fungible tokens. Quote, given how popular such items as character skins, weapons, and other items are in the video game community, Allowing players more freedom for modification and ensuring they stand out from other players is a concept which video game publishers should be jumping on in order to benefit from this expanding market. So this article is saying that due to the popularity of NFTs, non-fungible tokens, video game companies will jump on it. And that is exactly what they did. And we saw in the past year, I have a list here in front of me and I'll put the link in the description below of games and systems that are using non-fungible tokens. Look at this list, I'll just read some of these games. These are some games here, Ethereum on CryptoKitties that we just went over, Plasma Bears, Zero X Universe, Chibi Fighters, Hyper Dragons, My Crypto Heroes, and the list goes on. So people are willing to buy these rare non-fungible tokens. And back to Nike, so they will be using these non-fungible tokens to keep track of legitimate products. But then again, the eye-opening part is, it didn't happen yet. We don't know if it will take off, if it will be successful, but they'll have the ability to buy and sell digital shoes and breed digital shoes. And Microsoft knows all about NFTs. Microsoft's Ethereum-based game also is to reward gamers with non-fungible tokens. So these companies know what is going on. We're, we're really moving to a new world. And again, if, like I said, if you're over 21, especially if you're in your 30s, this is so far into you. It's, it's such a hard concept to understand. But if you're younger, this is normal. Just like 100 years ago, no one could have imagined Wi-Fi and iPhones. Same thing is going on today. In you know, 50 years from now, this will be the norm. It will be digital items on the blockchain that cannot be copied. And, and again, that is what made Bitcoin and blockchain so revolutionary and so valuable. It was the first digital item that could not be copied. Before that, anything digital could be copied. And then moving back to crypto market cap, what does this mean for Ethereum? No, I can't really tell you to be honest. A lot of these applications, they're built on top of Ethereum. This doesn't necessarily give value to the Ethereum token. If it did, Ethereum would not only be num the number one cryptocurrency today, it would be number one by a landslide. There are so many applications built on top of Ethereum, but as I will say this over and over again, and I hope that you are aware of this already, just because a cryptocurrency project has an application or a good use case, it doesn't always mean that it needs a token. A lot of applications they can run with any token. It doesn't have to be that specific token on their blockchain. I, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is they design it maybe that it needs to use that token, but there's no, it's, it's arbitrary. There's no, nothing special to that specific token. 
So just something to think about. When you see a lot of these successful projects doing great things, don't just say, I'm going to buy their token that they're selling. Take a look at it. Think about it. Do they really need to use that token or are they crowdfunding? Do the creators of these projects, they're the ones that understand that if, if we market the product, if our product is good, we can sell the token to people and raise money for ourselves. But again, is it really needed? So maybe I did provide you with an eye-opening experience today about the world that we are living in and moving forward. Or maybe I didn't, maybe you knew this already. But either way, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.